You know when you get a piece of music stuck in your head, it's called an earworm. Well, I'm going to call when you get an idea for an art journal page stuck in your head that you can't get rid of until you actually do it. I'm going to call it a journal worm. Do you think it'll stick? So I'm back working in my 12 by 12 art journal. There's only four pages left in it now. Um, this has still got the grid pattern on it that I drew on it when we were discussing um, the rule of thirds a while ago. Um, so I'm going to use it just as it is. I'm going to be covering it over anyway. Um, I've got here a collection of papers. Now, um, I have this idea in my head for this particular art journal page. And it's kind of it's kind of a strong image that I've got in my head for this page. It doesn't happen very often when I, you get like a flash of inspiration. But this one is sometimes when those flashes of inspiration comes, you get like a little idea. You get like um, a, a spark of of just something of what you want the page to look like. This idea that I've got in my head is is quite a strong and striking one. Although the page itself is not like really colourful and vibrant, um, in fact, it's only got two colours on it, black and red. The background is made up using old um, book text and newspaper print and that kind of thing. Um, but it's it's kind of a strong image that I've got in my head of it. and I don't know where it came from. Um, it, it's almost as though there's a kind of cityscape that's in my head but the image that I've got for this art journal page if I can translate it onto the page doesn't really look like a cityscape it's only vaguely looks like a cityscape but anyway I digress um you'll see what I mean hopefully if I'm able to translate what's in my head onto this page here so what I've done is I've gone through a load of my old book text I've got some old bible pages from an old Bible that I picked up from um, a charity shop, a Goodwill store um, here in the UK. Half the pages were missing already. <laughs> um, but what, what made me pick it up was when I felt the pages of the, the, the Bible, um, there, there were different thicknesses in the same Bible. Um, and that was unusual. I've also got some dictionary pages as well. Um, from an old dictionary that I've had for ages. Again, purchased from a, a Goodwill store with the sole um, purpose of tearing the pages out. Excuse me, a cup of coffee. Um, I got up early this morning. Ian couldn't find the car keys when he went out to work this morning. So, of course, he got me up to look for them. It was still dark and I didn't, I didn't manage to get back to bed. But anyway, I digress. So, I've got... Bible pages from some sections of the Bible, Luke, Galatians and Mark, some pages from there. Uh, dictionary page, like I said, from G and C, randomly just pulled out. And I've also got, now this was one page from a very old newspaper. Um, so let me just see if I can show you the date. October 27, 1888. So let me put the age of that newspaper in context. At the time, this was hitting the newsstands. Jack the Ripper was still running around the streets of London, committing his heinous crimes. 1888. And he hadn't stopped. He was still running around doing his business. Just to put that into context. <laughs> OK, so... What I'm going to try and do, the page is going to be done in kind of like two halves. It'll be a top and a bottom. So, yeah, we're going to ignore that background there. Um, but what I want to try and do is try and build up some layers on the page. But I don't want to glue everything down. I want there to be movement in the paper. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create some strips like so 
about half and half-ish, I think. Um, but bring in, I might need more, I might need more. I might just glue these down first, just mix them up a little bit. Yeah. Let's just tear the strips in half. I'll create some strips out of the paper. This is going to be one of those kind of art journal pages where, like I said, I've got an idea in my head, but I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. It depends on whether or not I can translate what's in my head to what's on the page. Now, because these are already kind of like in strips, I'm going to try and keep As best I can. So these pages were just, um, they're just the advertising pages. There's no actual news news on these pages. Those ones I think got used. When, I, when we bought these pages years and years and years ago, um, we had them scanned professionally. So we've still got the high resolution scans of these. And I think some of these scans are on the website as, as digital paper downloads. Um, so I'm going to try and do half and half. So let's just kind of mix, mix it up. I don't want them to be totally straight either. I want them to be a little bit higgledy-piggledy. Higgledy-piggledy. But about half and half. So I will come back and probably overlap so that there's at least kind of like half and half yeah that's probably about where i want it so i've got this big tub of elmer's school glue look and all i'm going to do is i'm just going to whack some glue down like i said i do not particularly want there to be I don't want it to be stuck down per uh, perfectly. See, I've already done what I said I didn't want to do there. Look, let's lift that back up again. Let's stick that back down. There we go. Try and keep that halfway mark in the halfway mark. So let's just tear some of that off the bottom. So it's probably better if I work across the page and do top and bottom as I'm going. Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, the Ferber grade has just woken up. Just heard the uh, the shaking of fairy ears. So I'm not sure which one that was. Probably Mr. Bentley. So let's just take off a bit at the bottom there. Like I said, I want them to be kind of higgledy piggledy. I don't want them to be perfect. And what I might do as well is just, just because I can, is just throw something down into the middle. Just to use up those bits. Now we are going to get a little bit of wrinklage going on, but that's okay. Don't mind that. Let's just have that off. Uh, let's dribble some glue down there. Alrighty then, let's use some advert strip. So we'll tear that off there. So a lot of this actually is about the texture more than anything else. Okay, we're getting there. Right, so let's put a bit of advertising piece up at the top. So we'll do that down there. I'm not even sure actually whether the newspaper, we've got this newspaper is, 
think it is, yeah, it is British because it's got all the addresses are all English addresses, like this one for the guns of the period, Express Rifles. It says Lower Loveday Street, Birmingham. So it, it is British. Okay, so about there again. Let's have that bit off. Okay, so I think, yeah, we're going to need a little piece just across the middle there. And I might just, just to kind of break everything up, just put a piece overlapping. Just kind of like in the middle. I'm just squidging the glue. I think that's what we'll do. We'll have a few pieces coming in vertically. Breakfast cocoa. Who has cocoa for breakfast? These Victorians are mad. <laughs> Chocolate for breakfast. No, 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 no. Got to knock it till you've tried it, kiddos. As the old saying goes. All right, so we're going building up nicely. Let's have a piece of. Bible page. I do apologise if this does offend some people. Perhaps I'm using an old Bible. So let's test me off. But like I said, it was falling to pieces and there were pages missing out of it anyway. But, you know. Some glue. Let's put that at a bit of an angle there. All right, we're getting there. A couple more strips and I think we're going to be done. Let's have a piece of that advertising over here. So that's probably going to be about right there. Let's just take that. And then let's have a bit of Le Bible at the top there. Yeah. Perfect. Get some glue down on that. And then we'll stick it in like that. And what I will do is I will use up some of these other strips just to kind of break it up. Like I said, I need another bit over there. And then the piece here. And then I'll have another bit just there. A splinter glue there. And then I think. What I'll do is I'll have some strips maybe running horizontally. Maybe just like that. Just to kind of break it up a bit. Maybe another one down here. I'm not trying to create anything which is symmetrical. In fact, asymmetry is okay. We're a bit wet and squidgy at the moment. But I think what I might do is just add another strip down here. Just to kind of break up that whiteness that was there. The strip there. And then a 
bit of dictionary strip there. Just because I could do with something maybe a little bit graphic there. Or maybe some larger text. What have we got? There we go. Some larger text. That'll do. Yeah, let's just grab some glue from there and then just break that up a little bit. I'm looking at this bit down here thinking we need something breaking up down here as well so let's have a look what we've got that says best prices so let's just stick that out there okay right i think i'm pretty sort of happy with the way that, that page is kind of broken up a little bit. So I'll just get rid of the news half the page of that, um, that Victorian newspaper, which is good. You can put the rest of it away. The rest can go in the bin. Okay, so glue to one side. Right, what I'll do is I'm gonna leave this to dry. I will help it along with the heat gun, but done all that in one shot so yeah we'll break there I'll have this all dried off I'll finish my coffee because it is going cold and then I'll join with you again once it's dry okay I'm not dry yet but I just wanted to show you um can you see where it looks as though I've gone in with distress ink along the edges I haven't I've actually burnt them deliberately so watch So it darkened. Just be really careful if you're going to do that because you don't want it just spontaneously bursting into flames. So I just thought I wanted to add a little bit of brown in to the paper as it was going down just to give it that little bit more grunginess if you like. Okay, so that's pretty much dry now. I was extremely careful not for any of it to catch fire. Um, so just as I saw it starting to turn brown, I lifted away with the heat gun again. Right, so what I want to do now is I want to just go over with a little bit of gesso and water. Just to kind of knock some of those stronger kind of images into the background. So I'm just going to come in with a little bit of gesso over the top in certain areas, just to kind of, I know I kind of wanted that right in, but I also don't want it to be too prominent. So we'll just go over with a thin wash, just to kind of knock it back a bit. I may need a couple of coats. So I'll carry on adding the gesso. Um, I'll go on to fast forward, play a little bit of Muzak. And I'll join with you when I'm happier. <laughs> Okay, so the page is pretty dry now. Um, what I have discovered, because I went back in to try and redo some more of that char in the burning, and um, once you've got gesso on your paper, it actually acts like a bit of a flame retardant. Who knew? Um, right, so time for the first bit of colour. So this is uh, Indigo Blue Vivid 
So these are um, water-based like pigment inks. They are extremely pigment rich. And I mean, extremely pigment rich. Now this is a black, um, but there is a hint of purple to it. So when you add water to these, you get a beautiful, now can you see, it's almost like ink. It's almost like octopus ink. It's absolutely beautiful. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna wet this section down here across the page because I want to just kind of have a little bit of play when I drop the black onto the page. I'm going to draw a kind of line across the middle of the page and I want it to be kind of swirly and inky, go up, come down, bit of a blob there and across the page like so. Stronger in areas. And I may have to do a couple of these. Oh, somebody at the door. Bear with me. Sorry about that. It was the Amazon man. Already started my Christmas shopping. Sorry. <laughs> Saying the C word. Right, I thought, seeing as Ian's not here today, <laughs> I could get some stuff delivered without him knowing. I can squirrel it away. Okay, so we've got that there. I'm holding the page because I've got a bit of a tilt on the page here. So if I leave it, it'll probably just all run down that way. And I don't want it to all run that way. All right, so let's add some splatters. Just to kind of break that up a bit, uh, random. Grunginess. Some bigger blobs. Oh, shouldn't have done that. Not into the ink itself. Yeah. more watery, pick some up and that's it. Some biggies. Try not to get any on the wall. <laughs> okay, that'll do for first layer. All right, let me get this dried off gently because I don't want any of it to move too much, and then I'll be back. All right, so that first layer of black is nice and dry, but I want to go darker can you see it's gone kind of like a purpley gray black so i've got some of this um dale arowney artist uh, acrylic artist ink and this is black noir so i'm hoping that the pipette in this is still working because some of them it doesn't right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a drop and then I'm going to run and up and down the page like so. Kind of thick. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of water. You see how it starts to wick. <laughs> and then oh, 
come on. That thread's gone a bit thicker than I was anticipating. But that's okay. Come on, run down a little bit. That's it, that's the one. Yeah, it actually is quite a lot thicker. You probably can't see much because it's all shiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and just gently lift some of that out. Okay. Maybe with a wet one. Start lifting some of it up. So roll it up. It's very black, isn't it? Too black. Let's see if I can lift some of it. Because we've gessoed the page, we might actually be able just to lift some of it. Okay, let me just stop it there, get it dried. Once I've dried it, that's it because it's acrylic, it will be set forever. Okay, so we've lost some of that spideriness that I kind of liked, but that's all right. We can kind of bring that lighter background to the fore again in a little while. Let me just grab some more of that Sheriff of Nottingham. That's the black indigo blue stuff. Because when I was dabbing off, I created a white void area over here, which I do want. So I'll just grab some of that and we'll come back in. Actually, I should have wet it first, shouldn't I? There we go. And I can dab it back into the four. And do the same thing up here, actually. Maybe just bring it down there a little bit. Kind of lost it underneath that acrylic ink. I kind of like that bluey blackiness so let's just add some more of that back on top. Let it pull. Bring that spideriness back in again. That's it. That's more like it. Don't want to go too far over there. I have plans for that one, for that little area. Okay, let me get this dried off. All right, so that's kind of brought some of that bluey, purpley black back to it, but it's still kind of blocky here. So I'm going to have to bring in some gesso. Um, note to self, when using the De La Rowney inks, use sparingly. Uh, right, so gesso. So what I'm going to try and just try and break up this area here a little bit. And the only way to do that is white splatters this time. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of the gesso, the white gesso, in case you're ask, wanting to know. Dina Wakely Media, um, even this has started to set, as they all do once you've had them for a while. Right, I'm just trying to turn the page. I'm going to try and get it so I can get it just kind of down that middle. So 
some of these will react to the vivids and some of them will just sit on top of the Delarani inks because the Delarani inks are permanent when dry so any white will sit on top whereas the vivids are water reactive so they will turn greyish um, before they dry but that's kind of broken that up now so I'm happy happy er I thought when I had that black ink that I may have actually lost what I was trying to achieve but I think I think I might just kind of saved it there a little it's a bit more black on the page than I actually wanted but hey ho, sorry for the rattling, I'm just getting some more wet wipes out to clean the paint mat down. Okay, so let me get this completely dry, then we'll see where it's all disappeared and where it's stayed, and then I'll be back. It's dry. Ta-da! Right, so... We can see where some of the white has kind of turned greyish where it's hit the acrylic ink it stayed whiter and brighter so that's okay don't mind that right so the next thing that i want to do now is i've got a lid uh, it's just a little tin lid uh, and i'm going to just drop it down about there and i'm going to just gently draw around it if yeah that's fine okay so what I want to do now is I've got some red so this is Will Scarlet obviously it's red um, but it's not like a burgundy red or anything it's more of a I would say more of a like tomatoey red um, in fact I'll show you Hang on. here's my colour charts so this is the Will Scarlet down here. That's the kind of colour. I could have gone with Much Miller, which is a bit more clarity. Could have gone with Fry Tuck, but that's a bit too magenta-y. Will Scarlet is the kind of red that I wanted. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just add some clean water down here. Get a small brush. Pick up some of that water. Oh, there's colour on there already. Yeah, it's only slightly orange. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint within that circle. Obviously, some of that black will reactivate underneath. That's okay. Just within the circle. Because what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to add some of the tomato we will scarlet into there and just kind of get it to wick. Because it won't go outside or shouldn't go outside the circle. Okay, so we'll just need to leave that to, to dry for a little while and then I can come back in and add some more. Might add a little bit of orange in there as well, but we'll see. Okay, so it's as it's drying, it's kind of taking on the colour of until almost dried blood, sanguine, um, which isn't really what I wanted to go for. But, like we said, we live and learn. So I'm going to use another De La Rowney ink, this time Scarlet. But this time, I'm going to use it very, very sparingly. Very sparingly. So... 
hopefully this will stay more tomatoey with it being an acrylic that's the hope anyway and you can still see through it because I watered it down That's more like it. And then just to balance that red at the top with down here, I'm going to take a little bit more water. And I'm just going to very, very kind of gently just add in. Just a few splodges. Be even just a few little splatters. But it's only for balance. I don't want it to look like blood. Right, with any luck, ugh, with any luck, that should stay like that. Okay, let's get it dried. Let me clean up. And I'll be right back. All that's now dry, and I think you can just see the red at the bottom here. Spattered red always does remind me of blood spatters. So I try to avoid where possible, but I think it did need that balance of the red above and below. And I didn't want to add it here as a reflection because that's too literal. So anyway, it's, I would say on a scale of um, about one to ten of it meeting my expectations, I would probably say probably about an eight. It's almost there. I did mess up with that black acrylic ink. Um, I really shouldn't have put too much, that, that much on, but you know, it is what it is. So what day is it today? Is it the 10th today? No, it'd be the 10th of the 10th. There we go. So I did have a kind of quote that I wanted to add to the art journal page. That was in my head when I was thinking about it. Um, but I've forgotten what it is. Because that's it. I'm getting old. <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come to me later. When it does, I'll probably add it. So keep an eye out on the photographs at the end. Because if I do remember it before it goes live on YouTube, then I'll add it in. But if it doesn't, then you know I have completely forgotten what it was. So... That's it from me today, I think. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this kind of stream of consciousness at a journal page today. If you have, please come to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this one, please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification to make sure you get notified whenever I upload a new video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you 
these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.